Hey guys, Kevin Yates here. So I want to talk about one of my best kept exercises for um, helping when, uh, your, your clients or your athletes who suffer from shoulder pain, right? Now, you know, we both know already that the majority of cases, shoulder problems get, exist from muscle imbalances. Um, often there's either tightness or dominance or both in the anterior muscles, the chest, the shoulders, the internal shoulder rotators, the lats perhaps, and there's weakness with the upper back muscles, the scapular stabilizers. Okay, but a lot of times we're, 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 we're doing rows and pulling exercises and things to activate those, those upper back muscles. But what happens when, if you're doing those and your client or your athlete's not making maybe as much progress as you'd like. So I'm gonna show you the one exercise and most fitness professionals absolutely cringe when they hear this one. It's behind the neck presses. Now before you think I'm absolutely nuts and I've lost my mind, let me explain a little something with it. I'll show you. Behind the neck presses are really, really good for getting your, your clients, your athletes to, to engage those scapular stabilizers and open themselves up. Because a lot of times we can, we can cue them until we're blue in the face with you know, doing rows by pull, pinch your shoulder blades towards your spine and, and pull them down and you know, cues like that. But telling them to do that, you know, in their mind they know it, but are they actually doing it? Are they actually capable? Now, a lot of times your client or your athlete might not um, just, they just might not be aware of actually how to do that. See, they know what you're saying, but they don't know how to do it. So this exercise behind the neck press, it, it's a way to almost force that to happen. All right, so I'll show you. When you, when you get up there, when you, when you get this bar loaded, right, You'll, you, can, you can see it from a little bit behind if I got it in the mirror, but it forces you to pull those shoulder blades together right off the back to, su to support the water. Now, a couple things you're, you're looking for are making sure that you're, you're not seeing this with the elbows behind the bar, and you're not seeing this where they're, where they're under it, or in front of it, I should say. Elbows should just be right under the bar, just about under the wrist. So then from there, it's just a straight shot up and overhead. And I tell you, it's... it's you, know, you don't have to load it heavy. You can you know, keep it in, in a, a 10 rep range or, or something like that. It'll, it'll do wonders. Now, there's a couple of things that you, that you have to identify before you put your, your client on this exercise. Not everybody's appropriate for it. And that's where people get in trouble with this exercise. See, it's not the exercise itself that's just bad for the shoulders. It is when you have a client or an athlete who's not appropriate for the exercise. What I mean by that, there's, there's, there's ways that you can assess that, right? So if you're wondering right now, you know, how do I know whether they're appropriate or not for that exercise? Well, there's a couple things you could do. Um, a couple assessments that are, that are really good. One, like I just talked about, you know, if, if you have them load that bar up and you see that their, their elbows are way back behind the bar, you're often going to see that the shoulders are shrugged up and, and rotated forward. That's a classic sign of either tightness or dominance of the upper trap, maybe a little bit of tightness in the lats, maybe in, in, the, in, the, in the pec muscles as well, and the shoulder internal rotators. Another is when they, when they have the elbows back here, right? Same thing. They're, when you see that, they just aren't demonstrating the mobility to, to open themselves up, to open that, that chest up and, and move that shoulder in the, in the right range to support it, okay? Now, does this mean that they're just automatically, that they have tightness there? Well, that's the other thing. See, if we do a typical posture assessment, and this is why I hate doing standard posture assessments, and please don't do standard posture assessments with your clients. It's just, it's freaking lame. Sorry, but it, it just doesn't work. And maybe in another video, I'm getting off topic, but I'll, I'll get to that. Anyways, so the other assessment you can do, right? You do your wall test. A wall test is a great assessment um, of shoulder mobility, right? If your client's appropriate or not. Um, another test you can do is an overhead squat test. Those are really, um, a couple of really good tests. You know, other ones you could do, you could, you could do um, lying supine, test for lat tightness, pec tightness. You could test the, the internal and external rotators of the shoulder if you want, right? Um, you know, sometimes those, you might need them, you might not. But anyway, so um, those, are, those are some ways that you can, you can assess it. Now, the other thing you wanna know is whether or not are you really looking at tightness? All right, now, if we see a client or an athlete and they, they demonstrate this forward posture, a lot of times we just assume that they've got tightness in those anterior muscles, but that's not always the case. Sometimes it is, but other times it's just poor awareness or it's poor strength of 
the scapular stabilizers. They, they have mobility, they can move, and, and they, they've got enough flexibility, right? But they just don't understand how to pull those guys together, or they're just not aware of it, right? And, and a lot of times, you'll know because you can, you can cue them correct, and correct their posture and kind of you know, pull them back a little bit and, tell them, and, and feel if they can engage it. And a lot of times, they might be able to. So, you know, the, what an exercise like behind the neck press, then it would be appropriate for a client or an athlete like that. All right, and I'll tell you, this exercise did wonders for helping me with my shoulder pain, you know, because I had that issue where I appeared to have really bad posture years ago, like horrible posture, but I wasn't really tight. I, I had a little bit of tightness, but the majority of my problems, the tightness went away when I just started cueing the, the scapular stabilizers the right way. So that's your, uh, one of your best exercises you can do for getting rid of shoulder pain behind the neck presses. So don't always assume that exercises are bad because most exercises aren't bad. It's just a lack of conditioning um, to perform the exercises safely and effectively that is. All right, so I'll see you guys next time.